which is phosphorus oxide. Now we see a white flame, we see white smoke when the reaction takes place and we see a white solid. So you need to remember these three. It's a covalent compound and the and it's a simple molecular compound because covalent bonding within the structure and it's simple molecular which means van der Waals forces between the structures. And then uh, sulf sulfur uh, forms sulfur dioxide upon oxidation. So this sulfur dioxide, it is actually um, so a sulfur dioxide, it actually oxidizes further to form sulfur trioxide. We will talk, we will talk, about, talk about this in a minute. But we see a blue flame when sulfur dioxide is formed. When sulfur is burnt in oxygen, we see a blue flame. And again, sulfur dioxide is a covalent compound. Covalent bonds within the structure and simple molecular because van der Waals force is between the structure. So the sulfur dioxide, it can actually further react with oxygen. You need to remember these state symbols as well. That's why I've given them over here. It, for, it reacts with oxygen in a reversible reaction in the presence of V2O5, which is vanadium pentoxide as the catalyst, V2O5 catalyst to form SO3. Yeah, so to form SO3, sulfur trioxide gas. Now, let's talk about the acidic base, acid base properties of these compounds. Sodium oxide, Na2O, is basic in nature. Magnesium oxide is also basic in nature. Aluminium oxide is amphoteric, which means it, it can react as an acid as well as a base. Sulfur dioxide is, sorry, sil silicon dioxide. Silicon dioxide is acidic in nature. Silicon oxide or silicon dioxide, whatever. It's, it's actually called silicon oxide, but it should be silicon dioxide. It's acidic in nature. Then phosphorus oxide, P4O10, is also acidic in nature and sulfur dioxide is also acidic in nature and sulfur trioxide is also acidic in nature. So we look at these acidic acid, acid base properties over now. Now if you take sodium oxide and react it with and you add it to a solution of hydrochloric acid you will get sodium chloride plus water. So you can see this is a neutralization reaction. A base acts with an acid to form a salt and water. Then magnesium oxide get this in the case of again neutralization reaction however magnesium oxide it uh, it forms a weak alkali because uh, we saw in the last slide that when it dissolves in water it forms MgOH hold twice which is weakly alkaline so this is more this is weakly alkal uh, weakly basic compared to sodium oxide now Al2O3 we'll we'll come to Al2O3 in the end because actually it's more complex Al2O3 is more complex because it can act as an acid as well as a base so we'll come to Al2O3 in the end. Let's come to silicon uh, silicon oxide, which is SiO2. So in the case of silicon oxide, it reacts with NaOH. It reacts with NaOH. Actually, so it will not react with simple NaOH. The NaOH has to be concentrated and it needs to be hot. So I've not written it over here, but you should still write it down that the NaOH should be concentrated and it should be hot so, and from, from this we get sodium silicate which is Na2SiO3 Na2SiO3 plus H2O this is sodium silicate plus water remember this reaction you will not have to you will only have to see the reaction of silicon oxide with NaOH no other alkali so remember this reaction as it is right so uh, actually this should be 2 NaOH, yeah, now we are fine. Then we come to uh, phos P4O10, P4O10 is also acidic. So when we add P4, uh, so to show the uh, acidic properties of P4O10, when we add it to water, when we add P4O10 to water, we get 
4 h3 po4 so you can see this is phosphor